through various different connections, I knew uh, Greg Delaney had given me my first job, so I really knew him very well, and I knew Richard um, from a sort of personal connection very well. And uh, we had already been working together, so there were very high levels of, of trust, um, but also uh, we all thought we were quite good at our individual um, things, what we did, job functions, and um, we, we kind of um, got on very well. And uh, the, the main thing about that is that it made work an absolute pleasure. I still am terribly grateful for the fact that by and large I work with people who are very close friends of mine, and that makes work good fun and if you're enjoying it you're going to be good at it um, so uh, one of the things that um, I think was really positive about DLKW and why it was successful was that the, there was a very tight team of people that were very close knit and I think it's really important that you feel that you have that connection with the people you work with and if you don't you should you should ship out because you you know life's too short not to work with people that you trust like and respect so that was the first thing the second thing um, was, and this is one of uh, uh, Mark Lund's great uh, aphorisms, was that nice is Darwinian. So we very quickly got a reputation for being nice. Uh, and in fact, I remember one of the sort of flippant suggestions of what the agency should be called was nice. And we always liked the idea of getting nice invoice or, <laughs> you know, nice letter. Uh, luckily, we didn't do that. And nice could easily be perceived as pejorative but the reason why we say because it can be nice but nice always sort of ends with nice but crap but nice uh, is Darwinian is um, true because what we we took the view that if we were incredibly nice to everybody that we came into contact one of the very early things we worked out was that uh, this era it was when a lot of the agencies were kind of aggregating up into big um, buying groups on the media side. So you'd have Mindshare and, and the, uh, there weren't that many agencies that weren't in some way or other aligned to um, uh, media agencies. And we sucked up furiously to all the media agencies as this kind of independent agency because we knew there was quite a bit of suspicion amongst the groups about um, you know, aligning across groups. And... Um, that really reaped benefits because we, we formed very good alliances with loads of media agencies. And I, I think you know, not making enemies is, is terribly important in our business because our business is all about connections and relationships. And we worked extremely hard at being on really good terms with everybody. Um, and we did that because we knew it would help us win and succeed, not because we just wanted to be nice. Um, so I think you can't underestimate the, uh, the importance of that. Um, the third thing, uh, and I, I found a really good quote that sort of covered this, was uh, that was in the Weekend FT, um, where they were, you know, they do that sort of lunch with the FT uh, thing, and um, they were doing it with uh, the slightly oddly named Richard Plepler. Do you know, have you, anybody heard of him? He's the, he's the CEO of... Um, HBO, the very successful American um, network, and they were talking about the importance of culture in a creative um, industry, and we created a very, very strong culture, and his, his quote, which they, uh, which they used as the headline, was, culture eats breakfast, a strategy for breakfast, which is, uh, as the journalist says, um, it faintly reminded her of Gordon Gecko's lunches for Wimp's Line. But um, what he said was the work environment that we create has to be transparent and you have to be able to brook dissent. Everyone can say what's on their minds and once we make a choice, everyone is behind it. Someone once said to me, you made the room safe to talk. And I said, if you want to win, what other way is there to be? And we placed a big emphasis on creating uh, the culture of the agency. I think you can never underestimate the extent to which your agency culture um, and your positioning, not so much the culture, but the positioning is um, defined by, by the clients. And we definitely fell into a trap because uh, we became uh, too monolithic in terms of the type of work we were doing and we got a bit stereotyped and we allowed ourselves to get stereotyped. So we became, I remember one person rather disparagingly describing us as the minstrels. So there was a kind of feeling that uh, we were going to do quite kind of, um, in its worst form, crass 
populist advertising, smaller site. One of the worst experiences of this was we, um, HBOS, which was the holding group for uh, Halifax, had multiple brands. And we, one of the things we did was we went around trying to sort of mop them up. And one of them was Intelligent Finance, which is a now almost defunct thing. But at the time, it was, um, uh, they were big in offset mortgages. And uh, we, the, the Intelligent Finance people absolutely didn't want to work with us because we were the Chavi Halifax agency and they were the posh Intelligence Finance people. And, um, but we were kind of forced upon them by, uh, by Halifax. And so we turned up, and before we did the pitch, the, uh, before we'd even started, the, um, the chief executive of intelligence finance said, now, I hope you're not going to give us a man in a purple suit, are you? And we sort of went, well, as a matter of fact, we are! <laughs> but we're going to explain to you why it's a good idea. Um, anyway, they didn't buy that campaign. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think you've got to be really careful about understanding how your clients define the agency and not getting stereotyped. Uh, and it took us a bit of time to sort of get out from being the Halifax agency. The effects of new business, apart from, you know, when you're a startup, obviously you've got to have it just to, for, for oxygen, but it has all kinds of other um, benefits in terms of momentum attracting talent uh, and being able to retain talent as well because moving people around. Um, and so importance of new business was something that, uh, really struck me and I, my kind of message to you guys would be make, attach yourself to pitches get make sure that you're working on pitches um, as much as possible and if you are going to set up an agency if you're part of a pitch team that functions really well maybe they should be your partners in your startup because the the kind of the microcosm of a pitch is a really good shortcut for whether or not it's going to work um, we use this expression shared agenda um, and there was always sort of a bit of tittering about shared agenda TM and, and, and it, was a, it was a bit of a proprietary thing that we talked about. Um, but there was a process to it, but the important elements to it were finding out what a client's KPIs were, finding out how they were bonused and then aligning ourselves with those things, but also reciprocating and saying what we wanted to get out of the relationship. So. I think clients are sometimes rather surprised when you say, right, the reason we want to work with you is because we see this opportunity, we think we can do award-winning work for you, we can change the category, uh, and this will all be great for us. Because they, you know, good clients want to be the, the best client in the agency. And when you explain to them that there's the opportunity for them to be the one that all the best people want to work on, they, their eyes tend to light up. And we were really... Um, focused and I think remain to this day focused on the idea that we want to align our agendas with our clients um, and be quite be quite ruthless about that and we um, we, we found that to be uh, really compelling so I think if and when you will start your agencies um, one of the things you should definitely do is make sure that everybody has got a piece of the action so we, every single member of, of staff when we started, uh, had, albeit in many cases very small, um, equity stakes. So one of the really kind of gratifying things was when we did sell, uh, everybody, including the receptionists, uh, made some money. Uh, now, they didn't make millions of pounds, but they made significant money, more than they would normally expect. And that was incredibly motivating for everybody, and it, it, it really... During that period uh, of, of equity ownership, there was a very, very strong feeling of, uh, of esprit de corps and, um, and, and a sort of common purpose.